Good evening, Clear Branch Baptist Church Wednesday Night Bible Study. It's good to be back with you again. Took a week off. Had a little time to uh, rest and recreate. Relax just a little bit. We don't need that from time to time. Have you ever thought about faith? I mean, the kind of faith it takes to make major things happen. I mean, we read throughout the Bible about people, Abraham, Moses, Jacob. We read about people like Elisha, Elijah, David. We go on down to the prophets. We read about Jeremiah, Isaiah. We read all through the New Testament about the apostles and the great work they've done. And yet, we wonder sometimes why do we not have the faith they have. I kind of wonder sometimes if we don't, in a way. I mean, we see things that happen around us each and every day, and we sometimes wonder about how people can make it through. Case in point is, you know, we hear about people who have a diagnosis, maybe it's cancer or COVID or some other thing, and they seem to face death with the unrelenting courage that it's hard to understand. But the more I read about it, the more I think about it, the more I thought about this verse of Scripture that we'll find in 2 Timothy, the first chapter, the 12th verse. This was Paul writing, and he was writing to, to Timothy, and he was this was pretty much Paul's last will and testament. This was the last writing that Paul was going to pen. So, uh, Paul's pouring out his heart to this young man, Timothy, that he thought so much of. And he said this in the first chapter of 2 Timothy, the 12th verse. He said, For the which cause I also suffer these things, nevertheless I am not ashamed. For I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I committed unto him against that day. Paul said that he was persuaded. He said, I am persuaded that he is able to keep that. Now, doing a little bit of study on it, it says this, that in the in the more perfect tense of the word, it says that I was persuaded in the past and remain now so. I've often thought about the courage it takes to face uh, life-changing decisions. I mean, there's very few times in life, I mean, I'm not talking about the kind of decision, you know, like what am I going to have for supper or, you know, which car do I buy kind of decision. I'm talking about the life-changing decisions. The life-changing decisions of who do I marry, you know, what career path may I take. Maybe your choice is having to do with health. Maybe it's having to do with do I take this medicine or not, or do I take this treatment or not. You see, uh, the more I thought about it, the more I have thought about being persuaded to believe in what God has done in our life. Looking back on the past and realizing how good God has been to us in the past, and realizing that if he is able to keep our past, if he is able to do all the things that he has done for us, that we should be persuaded that he is able to do what he will do in the future. I had a good friend of mine one time, an older preacher, that asked me the question. He said, why do you suppose it is that Christians are afraid to die? I never had really given up much thought. But the more I thought about it, I just really couldn't come up with a good answer. I mean, we as Christians, we profess that we believe in Christ and that Christ will raise us up in, in a glorified body uh, at the resurrection and that, that we will go home and then to be absent in the body is to be present with him. And so I couldn't come up with a good or answer to his question. I didn't know why we as Christians so oftentimes fear death the way we do. The fear of the unknown, I guess. He said, you know, he said, it's not so much that we fear what God is going to do to us. We fear what God is going to do to those we leave behind. He said, we feel like that for years, he said, at least the ways I do, as he was speaking of himself, he said, I feel like I have, I have provided, I have worked hard, I have done the things that I need to do to make sure that my family is safe and secure and provided for. He said, I was scared to think about death because, he said, in my thinking of death, he said, I was afraid that, that there would be nobody there to provide for them, that their safety and security would now come unhinged because I wasn't there. He said, once I really thought, started thinking about it, he said, I got to thinking more and more about how God had been so good to us. And my perceived sense of strength and my perceived sense of safety and security for my family through myself, was very misguided and arrogant. He said, I realized that God had provided. God had been there all along, and including me, had provided safety and security and provision. So he said, the more I got to thinking about it, the more that I realized I shouldn't fear death, because, he said, I am persuaded. You know, a lot of us would be a lot better off if we were more persuaded, would we not? Being persuaded to understand that God didn't just love us then. He loves us now, and he always will. That God's love for us is greater than our understanding, and that if God has been so good to us so far, what makes us think at any moment that he's just going to turn off the faucet and dry us up? 
I don't believe he will. I like what Paul said. He was talking about his preaching, but he said, For the which cause I also suffer these things, nevertheless, I am not ashamed. He said, For I know whom I have believed. You notice know, what he don't say? He don't say, For I know in whom I have believed. He said, For I know whom I believed. I know God, and I know how good he is. Then he goes on to say, And that persuades me, this is country boy language, if you will, and that persuades me to believe that he is able to keep that which I have committed against it, or to him against that day. So looking back, I think sometimes we ought to just think and be a little bit more persuaded. Persuaded in our beliefs that God really does have us in his hand. That God has everything in his control. And that God has our life and our death in his control. That we that have believed in Jesus Christ do not really have anything to fear. If we know whom we believe, that was a lesson from a previous message. If we know whom we have believed, and we should be persuaded that he is able to keep that which we have committed against him. And then, can you imagine the more victorious life that we would live as Christians? We wouldn't go around so downtrodden and downfaced all the time. Not necessarily thinking that we would look forward to the day of our death, but I don't think we would fear it near as bad. I don't think that we would fear the sting and that we would look at it more like Paul, that our race is run, our course is finished, and we've kept the faith. That should be all of our motto. That should be all of our, our, that should be our testimony, that we have kept the faith, we have run our race, we have finished our course, and now we are persuaded that he is able to keep that which we have committed unto him. In doing so, we could, we could live such a victorious life we wouldn't let the beggarly elements of this world drag us down. We wouldn't let the, the constant sense of fear, dread, and anxiety get to us. We would realize that it is better than we ever could have thought. So let's be persuaded. Let's look back and see how good God has been to us, realizing that he will be good to us in the future. Be like Paul. If it comes to our last days, we can look back and say, I know whom I believe, and I am persuaded that he's got me. Let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray tonight, dear Lord, that as we come to you in prayer, that if there's anyone out there, dear Heavenly Father, that uh, is struggling tonight, Lord, if they're struggling with uh, where they're at in life, dear Heavenly Father, if they're struggling with the things that they face, Lord, we all face things from day to day, Lord, that, that would so easily beset us, as the Scripture says. But Lord, help us to cast those things off. And Lord, help us to be persuaded tonight, Lord, about your goodness, about your grace, and about your mercy. Lord, we want to take this opportunity to thank you for your son, Jesus, for saving grace and mercy. We want to thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for keeping us in the palm of your hand. So, Lord, I pray now, dear Heavenly Father, that you should be with each and every one that might hear this message, Lord. And I pray, Lord, you just be with us here in our church, dear Heavenly Father, help us to ever grow in your grace and in your spirit. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, until Sunday morning at 10 o'clock here on Facebook Live in our makeshift sanctuary while we're still in the remodel process you come be with us uh just because we're not in the sanctuary don't mean you don't have an excuse we have got a kind of a temporary sanctuary set up in our fellowship hall so come be with us at 10 o'clock look forward to seeing you then until then pastor randy out